try to just uh, one question and another question. Premium, since we're kind of in that. Right. Will it be paid to the insurance company? Yes. Okay, not yes. to the government. The subsidy goes, the government pays it to the insurance company. No, but I'm talking your premium. Oh, your individual, yes, goes to the insurance company. You have to keep up those payments. Are they, because I'm sure people will ask this question, is it going to have to be now a one-time premium? A what? Or, a or will people still be able to spread it out monthly? Oh, it's monthly. You can still spread it out monthly? Yes, it's a monthly okay, payment. So they did make sure that... And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that people can do it on auto deduction. I'm hoping there's a way right there online to do it through. And I don't know, I haven't seen that yet. I just know that I, my bills get paid better <laughs> when I do it automatically. Yeah. And then over here... The, uh, most plans will have it uh, in different ways. Usually deductibles are a per person and then a per family deductible from what I've seen in my personal insurance yeah, experience. <laughs> I remember back in the day when I didn't have a deductible. So, yeah, yeah things have gotten I think tighter. I this, the subsidy is paid by the government directly to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So it's never taxed as income. Mm -mm. Unless you want to do it that way. Oh, you you can choose to pay it all yourself and then get the money back at the end of the year. Okay. And you could have people, you know, people who are, uh, you know, independent consultants who are, uh, you know, I can think of real estate agents who will really benefit from this, and they might like to handle their money that way. You know, d people who listen to Dave Ramsey a lot, they want to invest their own money, and then, you know, so, stuff like that. Right. Um, okay, so, the individual pays, sends a check or whatever to the insurance company. All right, but what if they decide they don't want to do that, and they don't think it will happen? They're, they're going to mess up their insurance. Everybody's supposed to get have insurance? Right. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem that uh, HHS and CMS are probably going to figure out, not us. I don't know. People need to pay their bill. They really do. Do you know, Mary? How, what they're, how? There's, there's, I still haven't seen that folks who don't have a checking account in the low-income category are allowed to send money orders. So the, these are questions that... Uh, well, they have. I think they haven't. That's a great question. You know, how will people who don't have checking accounts or debit cards or something like that handle it? Um, it is part of the law that they're supposed to be able to, but I haven't seen how it's going to come into effect. So there's a lot of little things like that, and actually, that's that's something that comes up as a complaint, right? That's one of the. They haven't even figured this out yet. <coughs> they haven't even figured out how to do this. They don't know what's going to happen. What's going to happen if this? What's going to happen if that? Right, Dixie? What's your? Right, and they also have. <laughs> if they that are complaining had an answer, we wouldn't all be having to sit here. Um, some people will not be covered. Isn't that correct, Mary? There, there's going to be people that just won't fit in either of these categories. But the main thing is we are going to be able to cover a huge amount that no one has bothered to cover before. Right, right. Yes, absolutely. So that's the end of my little family slides. Um, what happens if you don't buy insurance? That's another thing you need people will say. I don't want insurance. I, I don't want to do that. Why, why should the government be able to make me? That's against my rights. Well, okay. But a little bit of an example we talked about the other day in another workshop that I did, a person watching came up with this. They said, look, if your house is on fire, you're not allowed to buy fire insurance while your house is burning, right? That's what insurance is. And we, again, we made this choice to provide our health care coverage through health insurance. So if you don't want to be limited by pre-existing conditions, you need to go ahead and get insurance, right? Because it's not fair to the rest of us that are paying our premiums into this pool to be able to insure ourselves um, that when I get sick, and I have a million dollar bill for a stem cell transplant or something else because I want to save my life and you guys want to save my life, it's fair because I've been paying. But if somebody says, well, I'm not going to pay, they're basically, um, how do I put it in a nice way, a deadbeat? <laughs> um, a freeloader, you know, or just someone who doesn't see the connections between all of us and obviously doesn't understand how insurance works. So. But it is a free country, and if you don't want to buy insurance, here's what we do instead. 
$95 per, per adult or 1% of taxable income up to 285. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Yeah, it's minimal. It's a slap on the wrist. 2015 it goes up, 2016 it goes up, and eventually it will go up to the amount that they would have been paying for health insurance. Okay? They still are draining us because, again, if they end up with no preventative services, with no uh, care for their health, or maybe they're caring for their health themselves and they're doing a very good job. You know, there are people who do a very good job taking care of their health themselves and don't go to the doctor all the time. But let's say something happens, they absolutely need that. Um, they're in a car wreck and they've got to be in there getting that kind of care that they can't do at home, okay? then they still don't have health insurance and they're still pushing up our, our un, um, uninsured yes. Uninsured. So, you know, un, um, compensated care or uncompensated care take. So, and that's hard. Uh, back to Linda. Another question about those poorest of the poor people. Yes. They don't file taxes. Will they be paying the penalty as well? No, because they're, no, but, oop, did I go too far? I think I went too far. Hold on. Am I getting ahead of you? No, the, the next slide was exactly that. Uh, but I, there we go. So that's, why, that's one of the exemptions. There are people who, so you're supposed to get insurance. If you don't, you have a fine, but then there's exemptions to that, right? I before E. So the exemptions include reasons of religious conscience, you know, a uh, member of an Indian tribe, okay. Uh, income below the tax filing threshold. Uh, suffering a hardship, that's an interesting loophole, I don't know, incarcerated, not a U.S. citizen, um, and, and this kind of goes back, and I was going to ask you about this actually, Mary, pay more than 8% of your income for health insurance after tax credits or employee contributions. No. Yeah, okay. That's the full description. I wanted to make sure that was right. But uh, the not a U.S. citizen, I wonder if that's really right, because I think documented... Uh, Aliens yeah. do have to follow the law. Yeah, they do. Uh, what were you saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, so I think. Non what I saw was that non documented U.S. citizens, or documented non U.S. citizens, um, can apply for insurance in the healthcare marketplace, but I think they can't, they're not required. They're not required, so they can't be fined for not doing it. Because they, they, they may have better health insurance back at home when they drive back into Canada. So, um, okay, so some other categories. Um, th there are pre-existing insurance plans, and people in those plans that are then going to transition into the marketplace, they need to apply prior to December 1st so that they have a smooth transition. Um, the shop plan. I have some brochures about shop, so, and I've already given one out. So if anybody, we're not going to deal with shop right here right now. But if you want to take a couple of those flyers or you can print out more online, if you're a small business person, you want to take a look, it's kind of a whole other world, but it is based in this model of choosing different level plans. But, and, and as a small business owner, um, small business owners will know a lot better what they're looking for and what they need, and there's a 1-800 number for them to call and get really good counseling and advice about, about how that works. But it's, it's an option for them. A lot of small business owners will just want their employees to get Marketplace insurance. That works really well, too. Jim. What happens to the individual and or small business who buys insurance in October of 2013 or 2014 to avoid or evade this law? Well, as long as they're insuring themselves, that's their choice. I mean, they might be missing out. They might be locking themselves into a higher rate than they would get on the marketplace, but... Yes. Well, the plans have to comply in terms of the 10 essential elements. Every, not just marketplace plans, but that's part of patient protection. Every insurance plan in the country has to follow those rules. Now, how much they charge for it? If they're trying to sign contracts right now where they think they might be able to charge more or charge less, um, Department of Commerce and Insurance or HHS would have to answer some of those questions as to whether they can whether they did that in a legal manner or not. They can't sell a lower quality product. Right. Okay. They cannot. Um, yeah, starting January 2014.
Our, our thing isn't that we want to force anybody to do anything. Um, they, they have a choice not to get insurance and they can pay their fine, but they'd be much better off, we'd all be much better off the more people have health insurance. Uh, no, I, I was curious, so I went online and I wanted to check out other uh, insurance. I'm insured and I'm happy with what I have, but I wanted to see what else was out there. And it's interesting because they asked for your email address and your telephone number, so I gave them the cell phone number. And they couldn't wait to call and wanted to wrap me up into something before, mm. as soon as possible. Yeah. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, if you just send me all the different plans that you, you're touting so I can look at it, then mm -hmm. we don't do that. And I said, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't. They were really anxious to try to get me yeah. know, locked into something. Yeah, there, and there, there are some, some places or some brokers that are, that are doing that. I think a lot of places are understanding that this transition is happening. It's inescapable. It's business for them. You know, it might be as mercenary or exploitative as they'd like it to be. Oops. But, you know, it's still business, you know, within a sense of making our whole country stronger and better. So. Situation, I'm sure this question will pop up. Um, retired. Still filed jointly. One member insured under employer, you know, retirement benefit. Mm -hmm. Other member or other person buying private. Mm -hmm. How do you figure the income? Is it figured off that joint dollar figure? And and uh, Thursday when I talked to Walter about this, he said that there's a ch you can choose the person, which I didn't realize. I thought it had to be the way that taxes are filed. Do you know? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I mean, okay. the IRS sections on this are really complex. Jackson Hewitt hired Brian Hale because tax services see how complex this is and how important it is for them to help folks, and those folks are going to be their customers. Instead of going to IRS Block, if they can go to Jackson Hewitt right now at Walmart and get these questions answered, then that's who's going to do their taxes from now on. You know, so... Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of business opportunities for folks and a lot of opportunities to help people. Yeah, Jim? Excuse me. Has the state of Tennessee qualified any companies yet to sell in the marketplace? Right. Uh, yes, the plans that are going to be showing up as of October 1st, they've taken those bids and set all that up through. HHS did that. We're a federally facilitated marketplace. Okay. So, so the companies, state didn't have to do with that. Those companies are qualified then? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, are we in the state going to use insurance brokers to help sell those mm -hmm. plans? Yep. Yep, and they're regulated through the Department of Commerce and Insur Insurance. And when we talk about those emergency rules that come out, we'll see how those people were exempted from the emergency rules because they're regulated through Commerce and Insurance, but the Department of Commerce and Insurance decided everybody else needed to be extra regulated. So. We'll talk about that, but yes, brokers and, uh, and those business folks are going to be able to continue selling insurance. And that's okay. You know, yeah. Sometimes you book a tra trip with a travel agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I would think that they would be a great source of help to get this out there. Especially so, in the rural uh, counties. Yes, they, yes, they actually are. What were you going to say back there? Is there some sort of mechanism for someone, say, who made it through halfway through the year and then lost their job? can't afford to pay for that insurance anymore? There, well, I was told there are mechanisms for income changes so that you don't have to wait through the end of the whole year and then get hit with higher subsidy, you know, um, adjustment or something like that. And, yes, there are. The, the sad thing is that in Tennessee, the mechanism is going to be that they're going to lose their insurance because they're not going to qualify for Medicaid in some cases, maybe they, a lot of cases. You know, if they're 100% of poverty or higher for the whole year, then they'll be able to apply in the marketplace that lickety split as quick as they can, even though it's not open enrollment. Because right. that's a life-changing event that lets you do it. Right.